Over the past eight years, I have worked with so many people in the music industry, it's insane. Everybody in the YouTube world, from Andrew Huang, Simon Savita, Ed Talenti, to Aiden Kenway, all these different people on the YouTube side of things in the industry. I've done product launches with guys like San Holo, who's one of like the biggest EDM producers. I've worked with big hip hop producers like S1, where we've done product launches and cool stuff together. I've had people on my podcast now, and I've worked with a lot of people for like, you know, talented session musicians. And in general, I think I've had a lot of experience, and I wanna give you guys kind of like the no bullshit guide to meet more people in the industry and kind of build a good network for yourself because I you know because I started off with being this bedroom producer who didn't know shit didn't know anybody and I'd send out those desperate messages for people to share my song and all this fucking stupid shit that that really was killing the vibe of my networking and I was not working whatsoever and then now I've come to a position where I've been able to really build a strong network in the music industry so I just want to give you guys my easy tips follow them your networking will get better let's get right into it my first thing that I'm going to tell you guys what I've learned that'll help you guys out a lot is that how you approach somebody is everything like that first message you send if you're out there saying check out my song could you please share my song or any sort of favor at all it doesn't matter how good your thing is it doesn't matter how good your stuff is it doesn't matter how good your music is if you go to a random stranger hey man like I could go to like the street or like downtown you know where I live hey by the way would you cut my grass right that's literally what you're asking some sort of ridiculous favor, check out your song, this, this, and that, let me do this for you. It doesn't matter what it is. You could even be asking to help them. A lot of people say work for free, all that. Everybody's in the inbox doing all the above. So let me just start by saying that first message does not need to be anything like that, okay? I would argue that a lot of times when you're sending out your initial messages, DMs, and this goes for relationship building as a whole, I think something that's very important is to build authentic relationships that aren't about necessarily anything that you want. And I think a good example of this is building something that that they want or they need. This means maybe giving them a compliment on a new release. This means trying to help them out. They might post something saying, hey, I'm running an event in this city, blah, blah. And you're like, oh, I actually live there. Do, do you need any help setting up this or X, Y, and Z? Like trying to provide value or, or you know, you're trying to connect with a big YouTuber and you cut their video into little shorts for TikTok for them and just reach out to them. I remember I connected with a bunch of big music bloggers back in the day because we just offered to do some free Photoshop work for them and, and kind of touched up their logos or social media stuff, they were thankful and started sharing our music. The first thing you need to do is not always ask, right? It's like, what's important to them? Think from their perspective. And I think you'll get a lot more results. So that's the first thing is don't ask for shit. Don't ask for favors. That doesn't work out. So many people do that. It's sometimes just such a serious tone, right? I think it's a lot easier. It's just kind of saying like, yo, what's up? I love that new track right? Or, oh man, there's a really sick video. I've never seen somebody do that with a, a percussion sample before. Or another message might be like, dude, I saw your show last night in Atlanta. That shit was unreal. It's one of the best shows I've ever been to. Maybe it's a big YouTuber. Hey, I saw that video you did on sound design. Man, that was absolutely sick. You know, I didn't know about your channel, but I checked it out. It was fucking amazing. These are good examples. Or, yo, just LOL. Like they got a funny dog, like picture, whatever. LOL, that, that was hilarious, right? You don't, it doesn't matter. What matters is it's lighthearted and you're not asking for anything and you're usually trying to think about the other person, okay? The second networking hack I want to go into is finding a way to provide value is the most important thing. Even for me, somebody who has, you know, I have millions of producers on our email list. We have hundreds of thousands of subscribers on YouTube, Instagram accounts, like the whole fucking nine. It doesn't necessarily mean that I have value for like another producer. I could even meet somebody who's famous, but at the end of the day, there's no really even point in me networking and we're not going to build some sort of relationship because I don't really have value to offer, nor do I even need it. A lot of the best relationships is, is that when there's actual value providing. When I, when I worked with S1, for example, I was able to give him a bunch of sick paid opportunities to come work with us. We did a collaboration course launch and a few other things, or I've met some plugin developers and stuff. And I have reasons that I'm transacting. So I'm is paying them money. They're doing us. Same thing with the YouTubers, right? It's getting those random DMs I talked about is cool, but but when you have an actual deal or something to work out where it's their benefit and preferably yours as well, you get a lot more deals done. And to be honest with you, some of my best relationships are with people that I've just done a lot of business with. So the first thing is, is that the DMing stuff is great, but if you have some real business value to bring or some sort of value to them, you can get a lot more benefit. So a little secret trick with that, one of the best times if you are trying to connect with a big producer or a big artist or something is near their releases. If they're releasing something, I'm telling you, they want to do as much as they can to get those songs out there, that album out there. That's your best chance to try to get in those DM boxes and provide value, send them an email, come up with a legitimate reason why you could really help them out and try to bring real value. Cymatics is obviously, a lot of it's like money value at this point, right? Hey, can I pay you to do X video or something like that? And low key you can build relationships. But yeah, you gotta be pretty practical. At the end of the day, you like business value helps, right?
right? So if you can bring value in some sort of way to that person, it's really good. Kind of goes on that first tip, right? Trying to like think from their perspective and see what they're like bringing real value to the table, I think is a big deal. The third thing you need to know is, is that the exact opposite of that tip, sometimes it doesn't need to be any value whatsoever from a business perspective, but you can just be cool and relate on things outside of the music industry. The other way, that I connect with people and the people that I actually stay connected with, usually we share common interests and in shit that's not related to music at all. One of my buddy's uh, company, he's a famous DJing producer, he used to work with uh, Cymatics, a great sound designer. It's funny, Kyle, I could hit him up to do, you know, a sample pack or a preset pack, but you know what I hit up Kyle for? When I'm trying to play some fucking Smash Bros. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to play some Smash, I'm hitting up Kyle, hey, I'm in LA, let's play Smash, right? That's how we keep our relationship. And I have other people, you know, I play basketball, TB from Producer Grind. We don't, TB, if you're watching that, we don't make music, we don't make that much, like we've done it a couple times, but you know what I hit him up for? Come hoop, bro, you know? And uh, there's a lot of situations like that. I have other friends, you know, we relate on, we both have kids, whatever. Uh, whatever it may be, but uh, a lot of the relationships also have nothing to do with music, right? And I think that's important because that's just like regular friendship building. I think it's it's pretty simple, you know what I'm saying? And uh, if you could build like some real friendships and stuff like that has value as well. And the cool part about that is it's okay to be friends with somebody or network with people for years before any sort of business value kicks in. You don't need to be so eager to try and get whatever that person has from an audience perspective. I think being patient, building real relationships, real friendships or whatever it may be in the long run is gonna help you out a lot. And then here's my last and final tip. You don't need anybody else for any sort of success, especially not in the music industry and especially not when everything from your phone your phone will literally do everything you need networking wise, social media wise, content, YouTube. You can run ads, you can do this, you can come up with products, songs, music videos yourself. A lot of the shit popping off is just iPhone videos. It doesn't matter what sector of the music industry you're in. You really don't need to meet anybody. And the reason that's so important is, is that one of the things that attracts humans in general, this could be even in dating or something, is abundance, right? When somebody is abundant, when somebody's like scarcity and they're needy, you hear that in relationship, people are needy, people push away from that, they don't really like it. When people are abundant and, and they don't need you, same thing in sales, right? Whoever needs to sale less has the more, more leverage. So at the end of the day, by being more abundant and understanding that you really don't need anybody, you're not going to be so tempted to send that fucking message with your song because you're so needy about them sharing it, whatever it may be. You don't need anybody. So if you truly understand that you don't need anybody, when you go to network, when you go to talk to people, it could even be when you meet somebody and purchase subconsciously through your, your tonality and your emotions, because we actually do like 70, 80% of our communication actually through our facial expressions and our gestures and whatnot. It's unspoken communication, but when you come off as abundant and you truly are abundant, because you don't need anybody, right? You can do everything from your house. Then when you, when you go network, a lot of times you can be like a little bit less on edge, a little bit less needy. When you meet those producers, it's not like a holy shit, I, I, I gotta give this person my flash drive for my music. Oh, I, I gotta try to get their contact. It becomes more natural and you're not like, you know what I'm saying? You can keep it chill. And, and that chillness, people can feel. And that authenticity, people can feel. So if you're truly, you don't need them, you're gonna be more likely to do better networking. I know that's a, a, a mind fuck, but, uh, but seriously, um, a lot of people, I can tell when I meet them and they're so eager to like get something. It's like, dude, calm down. You know what I'm saying? Relax a little bit. A little secret trick, and this is very specific, to do the absolute best networking of your absolute life. If you wanna have more connections than almost anybody else in the industry, start a podcast. And it can be online, it can be in person, it does not matter. Online's a little bit more practical. But if you start a podcast and interview other people, that is an easy way to provide value. Oh, you have an album release? Let me interview. Oh, you made this cool hit record? Let me interview you. Oh, you're amazing at production? Let me interview you. Oh, you run this big YouTube channel, this big music blog? Can I interview you, right? It inherently is a product that is developed to get you to provide value to them because who doesn't love their ego stroked? Who doesn't love getting content made? Who doesn't love looking good and getting interviewed and telling your story? People love to talk about their fucking selves, right? And that's one other thing that helped me, as crazy as it sounds, but now that I think about it, uh, Cymatics, I used to run a podcast really hard and that was a, a way that I had met a ton of people. And a lot of those people, I flew out, we hung out for the day. That's the other benefit when they're coming here, we're playing ping pong, we're, we're fucking off getting some food. And a lot of people I still talk to today is from that podcast and I've done a lot of business deals from that podcast as well. And yeah, I think that's a, that's a big hack. Probably the biggest hack of all these entire videos if you just run a fucking podcast, right? But you mix in those other things, I think you're gonna do a lot of good networking. That's about it. I just wanted to make this video, um, something I was thinking about, just reading through my DMs and, and seeing people so eager to meet other people in the industry. If you follow these tips, I guarantee you'll be able to level up your, your networking quite a bit. Um, 
and I think you'll meet a lot of people in the industry and keep real relationships. You'll keep real relationships. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this little video on networking. If you guys like more off topic videos or, or have questions about specific videos that, or specific ideas that you want me to make a video for, feel free to leave a comment. Anyways, um, hope you guys enjoy this. Peace out.